presents Games for the End of the World together with Lynx. Hello, I'm Tom Deacon, and this is Games for the End of the World together with Lynx. Now, the apocalypse is absolutely raging still on upstairs, but do not fear, I'm down here safe and well in the bunker, and I'm joined by a singer, songwriter, a person who has three number ones under their belt and has worked with the likes of Calvin Harris and Rudimental to name but just two. I'm, of course, talking about the one and only Mr. John Newman. Hello. Hello. You seem very well calm, collected with the apocalypse. I'm all right. Yeah? I've got a bit of a cold, so that always takes the edge off this ap apocalyptic <laughs> state, doesn't it? Yeah. You're sort of more concerned about your cold than well, what's Well, you're more happening. concerned about your own wealth than what everyone else is doing to the world, you know? It yeah. makes you feel just a little bit yeah. more on your own side, really. <laughs> if, 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 you <laughs> if you can't love yourself in a time like this, yeah, you know, it's going to be difficult. What are you even doing? Um, you know? I, I wanted to ask though, John, with, with the end of the world, how is it affecting you getting to gigs? Is it become a it's problem? It's slightly annoying because I like driving, but it's all right for my rally driving because I can rally drive Yeah. because there's loads of bumps and stuff to go over. But for like the sports cars, they got they got wiped out by um, Kim's nuke anyway. So <laughs> yeah, I don't even have to worry about them ones. They've gone. But in terms of getting to gigs, there's no one really to come and watch anyway. Yeah. I mean, not much changed. But it's, I mean, before the apocalypse, there weren't that many people coming to watch. So, I disagree. It's kind I, of the same. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> I disagree, John. Um, uh, normally, I ask people when they come down to <coughs> the bunker if there was someone, a gaming character you could have from the world of gaming uh, that could help you get through the challenges of the apocalypse. Who would you choose? It'd either be, I know this is from a film, it'd either be. Will Smith from Independence Day, because he's not Independence Day, what's it called? I Am Legend. Yes, yeah. Because yeah. he's already experienced in this department. Or Tomb Raider, Lara Croft. That's a smart move. Yeah, because she's just like focused on sorting some stuff out. Yeah. She's got quite a posh voice. Would you have her on one of your tracks? There's maybe like a Sophie Ellis Bechter sort of style. You know, I'd, well I'd rather have Sophie Ellis Bechter, to be honest. But she's not from the world of gaming. But if you had to choose. But they, um, they could make a Sophie Ellis, once this is all over, they could actually make a Sophie Ellis Bexter game called Murderer on the Dance Floor. And it could be like <laughs> GTA slash Red Dead Redemption, where you just go around murdering on dance floors with dance moves for yeah. a PG version. Yeah, as soon as they're off the dance floor, they're in the safe zone. Yeah, they're in the safe zone. Yeah. But you've got to dance when on the dance floor. And if you're not dancing on the dance floor, then it's murder on the dance floor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, listen, John, uh, I want to I wanna take it way back, way, way, way back uh, to the beginnings of Mr. John Newman, uh, back up in, in well, it was, it was up north, North Yorkshire, because you moved around a bit. So take me back to your sort of like experiences growing up in sort of rural Yorkshire and when it comes down to gaming and... Yeah, I mean, I grew up in a tiny, tiny little village and moved to a, a, a bigger town at about 15, 16. But um, in the tiny little village, I remember... I actually just released a song called Mama and it states the address in it. So hopefully there's a statue outside of it now. But it was called Two Park View, right? And I had a little bedroom that was on the street. And I had all the disco lights, all the smoke machines. I'd built like full whatever because I was handy at DIY because I got a welder at it eight years old but so like my room was like proper kitted out I'd like proper built it out and I, I had my little PS1 in there but I remember all my mates coming around and we'd like be pumping out like club land tunes with disco lights and smoke machines going off whilst playing the likes of Clash, Crash Bandicoot <laughs> And um, so you're making it Abe's a spectacle. Odyssey. What you were making it a spectacle, a big oh, occasion. yeah, it was an event, yeah, yeah, yeah. To go around to John's house was an event, <laughs> definitely. We once got the fire brigade called on us because <laughs> they generally thought there was a fire from the smoke machine being pumped out. Because your mum, your older brother, uh, my mum is not my older brother, no, no my older brother, no, there my was older... your mum, your, your <laughs> older brother. <laughs> there was, there, there was, <laughs> look, just because I'm from the north of England in a small village, it doesn't mean that my mum is my older brother uh, all right i'll rephrase that john um your mum you live with your mum yeah also there my brother he has it? one eye <laughs> <laughs> he's my mum's brother <laughs> no no um but, but, but yeah i lived with uh my, my brother my older brother and my mum yeah growing up yeah. my dad left when we were really young so 
Mm. So, so that that was the family unit. Do, now, I haven't asked when people have come down into the bunker. Did you? Did your mum ever play at like Crash Bandicoot or Abe's Odyssey? Because I'm I'm gonna get to <laughs> chatting about your brother and gaming against so him. So I was uh, I was getting my hair cut in a different hairdresser's bunker yesterday, and he said that his mum and dad, Joe, he's called Joe, he's my hairdresser. He said that his mum and dad wanted for their birthday a PlayStation Four mm. and Red Dead Redemption Two. Yeah, I mean that sounds. And the seventy one and seventy three. He said. Yeah. Well, they've got, they got, they got time. This, they can really get into it. But what are they planning? Are they thinking, <laughs> when I go, I'm taking the rest or something? You know, like, that's a pretty brutal game for them to get their teeth into. It is. But I like that, though, because there's something fun. They're, like, bored. Like, daytime TV isn't what it was. That's great. So yeah, you can get into I, Red Dead. I like the angle. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I get it. What was the first game that you had on, on that console that you had? Because you mentioned Crash Bandicoot. But then I, I, I'm looking back, and I, I did... Have a computer with um, what was it called? Road Rage on it. Oh, what a game! What well, a you game. had that big chain, and you were like, wow, wow, booyah, saya. <laughs> and then Tekken, I had Tekken as well. That was early on. I'm trying to think what like the earliest game was that I had. Yeah, but there's so many. So, so you've you've gamed through. So hopefully, we'll yeah, yeah. Up those little bits. And did you play against your brother? Was it the kind of like I know you had the disco lights, the smoke machine, but was that a competitive level? Well, me and my and brother, brother are very different. Like, my brother, like, I build things all the time. Like, I love building stuff. He literally can't stick a piece of paper to the wall. <laughs> like, he fears the idea of doing that. He's the worst at, like, DIY. And at, like, gaming and things like that, he's just not... I don't know, what does my brother do then? I think he just... He's a bit more of a thinker rather than a doer. No, doesn't really think either. Outdoor, sort of, and dressing up. I think, up. yeah, he likes outdoor. And yeah. then he was doing like... He actually flew planes as well at one point. Yeah. In uh, Weekend Warriors, what they called... Um, yeah. Like Weekend Warrior uh, uh, Air Force Troops. Yeah. He learned to do that. He'd love Goodwood races. I'm not plugging Yeah, it, he would. Yeah, he likes love... cars and that sort of thing now, yeah. And never a dull moment, I'd say, in a Newman family. No, there isn't a dull moment. No. And I, I suppose that noise, that energy, uh, move you towards music in some way. I'm making that connection in my head. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, my dad had plenty of instruments laying around the house, which helped. And then my brother, I'm completely joking when I say that. I don't know what my brother does or whatever. He, he, he inspires my every day. He's, he's an incredible songwriter a musician and he went off to Newcastle to study music and started a band there and everything and that really inspired me and then yeah next minute I had airbrushes and Westlife flying around bedroom instead of Clubland 90 <laughs> <laughs> and games <laughs> so, so, so he kind of inspired you but were you ever inspired because I remember playing like Sega Mega Drive that was just right next to it, that classic 16-bit the, there was music in every soundtrack uh was the early game that's games true and that's become you? well popular again now yeah like, that's a really niche but popular thing did you was there any sort of games that that had a great soundtrack that you love listening to no i remember getting i know this might not be a game but i, I the actual one of the first large steps towards my career because i started as a producer i started like producing dj tunes uh like sorry hip-hop tunes and like house tunes and stuff and like mixing in my bedroom with my mates and stuff like that. Um, my mate Scott and Josh and Robbie. And um, yeah, we'd be like mixing Tiesto records and stuff like that, which is crazy. And But the first thing that I actually got that started all that, I remember, was my old auntie John gave me a cereal box. Because she said, oh, it says music. I know you like music on it. And I got Fruity Loops out of it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and it, that I think that was for the PlayStation actually. Yeah. The giveaway was for the PlayStation, so that was the first format of me like going, "Whoa, you can make music!" I remember going around, to, and that was that's a really weird thing because I remember going around to my mate Scott's house, who was who's now become like a tidy DJ. He's like a big producer, and he we we were both just sat making music on the PlayStation. Like that was the first way of us actually making music. Yeah, that's. I mean, it's, it's like awesome. in terms of the modern world, you know, in terms of yeah. like having software to sit and to use now in in in, in transition from having to record it on tape and yeah. being more organic. You know? So we, we, we didn't really get to uh, know about John Newman 
the producing side with Fruity Loops. Yeah. <laughs> but we did with your voice uh, for Rudimental mm. when that came out, Feel the Love. So what, how did that come about? What, what, what's that transition point? I know we've jumped quite a quick. Yeah, no, no, no. It's, well, just to give you an idea, and then I'd had enough of the town after that, and it, and it was progressing. And my brother said, go and, you know, I want it to be a mechanic as you've probably seen from me talking about cars all the time and everything. And then uh, I decided, instead of falling asleep at the back of a mechanics classroom, because all I wanted to do was design and draw crazy cars and weird things and design things, I'd go to Leeds College of Music and actually learn music. Um, but the thing was that before that, it was me just producing bits and bats, like doing this and this and this and just singing a bit and seeing what it was and patting my hands around a bit. And then I lost my two best mates, well, two of my best mates from where I grew up. And it was the first time I remember my, my student flat was such a mess at the time because I was just in an absolute wreck. And But it, what that did was brought music into life Mm. into a real subject and a real meaning and and made me use it to start healing my scars and healing everything so yeah um came down to london and because i'd, I'd been working in a bar in leeds and, and music had moved really well and then when i moved to um london again i worked in a pub found myself in a place called the silver bullet got a manager and stuff kind of over watching me but i basically lost my job in the pub where I was working because I gave away a free pint, which is which is ridiculous to be honest, because I was the best member of staff they had. Still, and I heard it was a half, so they can't be. Yeah, exactly. On a, yeah, a full. Do you know what I mean? No. Yeah. So they could have they could have just turned me to part time, couldn't they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so, who, who did you give the the pint to? <clears throat> or did you give the pint? I think it was the local drug dealer because <laughs> I, I knew that he was well hard and I wanted protecting yeah, protect- in, a, in a new in a new city and I've never actually said that. <laughs> yeah, but no, but it's I've never about, actually said why though, I gave the pint away. <laughs> but it was because it was the local drug dealer. I knew he was well hard and I wanted protection <laughs> from somebody really hard in That's a new smart. city. Yeah, he was that smart. Um, but at the time, I'd met. Uh, I worked. My supervisor there was called Sophie Agger and. Uh, her brother was a musician. We started hanging out a bit. And then when I lost my job, I'd, I'd lived in a warehouse conversion for ages in Manor House. And, he's, and I, I, I just wanted to make music. I was so done with like serving people pints and washing glasses and getting hailed abuse out. I was so done with it. It was fun at times. But all I wanted to do in my life was make music. That's all I wanted to do. I didn't care about money. So I decided to put myself on the dole and get housing benefit. And peers that I'd met said, come and live with me in my house. And his dad's a musician, all Northerners. And it was just amazing, the vibe in there. We were just making great music. His friends were all musicians. And then his friend Kezzy had made this tune, this drum and bass tune. He played it to me and I just chucked my voice on it. And next minute I was I was in a hospital, but being told I was number one in the charts, you know, it was- That's awesome. It was a weird, weird, weird whirlwind that happened all very quickly from being a lad that stood in a bar playing a guitar to being number one in the charts. You yeah. Because well, c- I feel like you don't know that it's, things happen for a reason. So all of that chronological, things happened, in my opinion, to get you to that stage. Mm. But then did you feel like the pressure, you've, this is the first track you put out there in the world, it goes to number one. That's like completing a game, like a, very quickly. Yeah. Did you find that like, oh no, I've got to match this now. How do I, how do, I do that? Because that came, come about so organically. Yeah, well, I think that was a, blessing in disguise because if it came around from me overthinking and doing it for myself I think we'd have had a bit of a situation but because I just put my voice on it and worked with the guys to produce it and stuff like that and not giving in was just a natural thing we just we didn't have any pressure on us we didn't know what we were doing we're just making music you know so because of that it didn't it didn't affect me when it came to Mm. making love me again all my solo stuff which I'd already been working on anyway. So it was a really natural thing just to make Love Me Again as well, because I was like, well, that's what I as a solo artist would naturally like to make, mm. you know? So, so like, I guess your music, kind of your escape or your way of dealing with things that go through your life, but where did gaming fit in with you then, John? Was that like, 
the same but their music took over did did gaming have to take a back seat i was just producing all the time when i was in leeds and, and writing and working and, and studying music so i think that was the thing i'm a, i'm very much like that like i get really hooked on something and yeah. give everything into it and that is the challenge in having a long career to keep to keep that yeah. you know focus to keep going and keep getting that and stuff so but yeah, I think gaming would have taken aside. In fact, cars did as well because my two mates died in a car accident. So it was a bit like, you know, I'd, I'd lost a bit of interest in the whole idea. Yeah. Um, so music really did take over my life. But then it was actually when when I moved to London, I got um, I got a massive screen on my wall and I started playing uh, Formula One all the time. That was quite fun. That was good. And then... Uh, I think actually the most I gamed was when I lived with peers. We just sat and played FIFA all the time. Yeah, yeah. All the time. But would, that was great. Would you say that FIFA was your, your number one go-to game? Because I know the rudimental guys that they, they played FIFA and that's, yeah. that's a fun element. Did, did you play with them? Yeah, yeah, totally, yeah. Uh, like all the time, that's who we, we all played together. And I think the... I think FIFA... Ah, It's, look, this, the, my top three, I've got FIFA. I love mm -hmm. it. I love playing my mates at FIFA. I love doing that. I think it's really social. The opposite to social is putting headphones on and playing Formula One mm. and getting really into the game. But I love it so much and I do it properly. Like mm. I put the settings on as hard as possible. <laughs> and I understand if I come sixth because I qualified badly <laughs> or I had a slip on turn three. Like I love that. I love yeah. it being realistic. Or like a crash out the race. You're not allowed to restart. That it doesn't happen. No. Do you right? sit there, just wait? <laughs> yeah. No, I do. I do the full weekend. I do every practice and everything. That's incredible. I get so into it, yeah. Have you um, ever contemplated like just getting some we've got some overalls here, but like have you ever because sometimes if you're playing FIFA, I've been known to pretend to be the manager right. after, and discuss team tactics yeah. with nobody there or football. With a uh, little waistcoat on that says it's coming next home, question. Isn't it? Yep, next question. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I think you referred to my first question. That's enough for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But with with Formula One, because you can't, you believe you believe in your own abilities and yeah. you take yeah, it yeah. to that extra level. There's no, a no, it's great. I love it. I Would love you ever so consider what? getting like the overalls if if what getting into the mode? Yeah. Right. Well, bear with me. So then, then the absolute opposite to FIFA being uh, very good for social skills um, is. Well, my wife basically hates it. It's, it's currently folded up in the corner of the room, which she's very happy about because I'm about to get a new one, which she's not very happy about because it's even better. But is I have uh, I ripped my music studio out to put a racing simulator in it. And I play Dirt Rally all the time. Now, when, I, when I'm on that, I play VR, headphones on, gloves on. Yeah. It's full experience. I'm working on making a helmet that has my VR goggles in it. And gotcha. has the mic in it and has the earphones in it. That, which like, I've got anyway in my rally car. Like, I have my earphones in and my microphone, but I haven't got the VR in it. So I want that. Okay. And how's that going in terms of... Relationship-wise, it's going awful. Yeah, yeah. But I, I'm getting pretty quick. <laughs> on one of the stages, I'm one of the fastest in the world on it. <laughs> but that takes a lot of time and commitment. And actually, I my friend's a real rally driver and I've... I, I've stupidly offered him to uh, to see who's quicker in real life. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, basically, no, I think we're going to switch it around. So he's going to drive the simulator gotcha. and see how quick he can do it. And I'm going to drive his rally car and see how quick I can do it. But I think it doesn't really matter that much because it's not like it's worlds apart because I drive rally cars all the time and he drives simulators all the time. So it'll just be somewhat funny to watch on telly, won't it? Really? I want to see the vlog when it's yeah, up. I yeah. want to see a vlog. Yeah. Vlog that. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, I, I want to ask, so you've got, because I, I like the way you've broken down those different games that you're really into, but the FIFA one, the more sociable, are there mm. any other people that you've played against apart from Rudimental? I've played loads. They do loads of these things at like backstage. When, they, when uh, in the good old days, when uh, people had to pay for music and you got paid from it, which was great. Um, they used to have uh, gifting tents and stuff at festivals. Like, they used to give you free stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing, but you got to pay for everything now. But um, And basically, they used to have in the gifting things, they used to have like where you could just play people at FIFA and stuff. So I've played quite a few people in terms of that. I'm trying to think if I've played of anyone that you'd know of. 
can't. There was somebody I played against. Because I know someone like Example, I've interviewed Example. He is a big football fan, big Fulham fan. Yeah, he is. Uh, there was somebody that I played against that was really big. Because Michael Dapper just went on and on really? about all the FIFA players and, and every professional footballers he's played. So I just didn't know if there was someone that I could then turn back to Michael and go, yeah, well, John's played against so-and-so. Should we just make someone up? Yeah. Um, Pogba. Who? Oh. He'd be well annoyed, wouldn't he? He would be, he'd be so annoyed. He'd yeah, be raging because like, he's a United fan. So was, yeah. Oh, would he? Yeah. Right, he's Paul a United Pogba. fan. That's great. Yeah. Paul Pogba. Easy. Solid. Um, all right, John. Um, so, obviously, because it's interesting, the FIFA, you mentioned that, because you feature on the FIFA track. That is like... That is. 2014 with Messi on the no, front no. cover. No, no, and let's get this right, 2017 as well. Nailed it. <laughs> and Didn't you would finish, not believe, right. no, no, sorry, no, but you no, would no. not be believe how good it feels. <laughs> it's literally like playing a game and winning and just going, mm. <laughs> Because like you like you win and then he goes, I need to know now and you're like, Way! it's such a good feeling. It's so cool. And well, and like like you know, like when you sat playing FIFA, you sat there in your wee stand like boxers and trousers and you like got uh pizza all over you and you you know just literally sat hung over playing your mate in a completely different world to the kid that stands in a suit on stage singing in front of thousands of people. So it is quite cool to turn around and be like, still got it. <laughs> <laughs> How does that even begin to happen? Because I know you're on Madden 16 as well. Yeah. Uh, Odell Beckham on the front. The, the, do, do you, obviously you played FIFA, but they're also in that Madden, have you played other games just to hear your voice uh, in the song? What else was I on? Uh, Madden, uh, Need for Speed, Most Wanted. Was yeah. I? Yeah. <laughs> you That's need to the get sickest that. one. <laughs> I need for Speed, most wanted. I totally forgot about Need for Speed. Like yeah, yeah, I love Need it. for Speed so much when I was growing up. <laughs> so much, I've totally forgot about it, and I did not know I was on there. Yeah, feel the love. Oh my days, that's so sick. Right, I'm going to the shop after this. <laughs> Which one is it? Most Wanted? Uh, yeah, yeah. No, wanted. it's not. That's yeah. crazy. And then, I did uh, not know. Obviously that. on Madden NFL 16, you had Come and Get It. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not so fast on the NFL. All right. It's but, not rugby, is it? No. It's, <laughs> it's not rugby. Um, so, but the, how does that even happen? Or would you even contemplate like, I've got another banger of a tune. That's mad. Look at that. I think that's mad. I think it's mad. But how would you go away from that and go, I want more uh, tracks on the next future games that are coming out? Would you sort of contemplate, how do I make a banger? Or, or it's funny you say that, actually. So, like, I would normally sit here and eat humble pie and be like, oh, you know, you just got to take what you... <laughs> and that's a nice... It, no, it's true. Like, it, I am very fortunate and it's an amazing thing when people do that. Um, but I, I actually... Uh, I've got a new EP coming out and the lead, well, the lead track of it's out, it's called Without You, but the the next track that's coming out is I actually wrote it whilst watching Formula One highlights on okay. purpose to get the energy. Now, I mean, I don't know whether we've heard or back, but I've, I've been knocking on the door going, come on, like I wrote this tune watching F1 for that yeah. reason, but I think it'd be, like I did it for like the idea of the, the the battle and the energy I just buzz off that like I well buzz off it so I thought it'd be quite an an interesting thing you know people make music to to video all the time like films and stuff like that to try and draw new things so I, I did it to that and yeah it's great I produced it whilst putting the high, I'd been watching Formula One to be honest but then I was like right what would what would a tune be in this yeah. highlight section so that'd be really cool I mean I think I've had my tunes played on there before but you know, getting a bit of longevity out of it. Well, my, <laughs> well, my fingers are crossed because um, obviously I'm, I can put a word in where involved in the FIFA, um, uh, sorry, F1 esports. I can have a word. Definitely That'd be for the, sick. For the 2020. I, that would be raging. Yeah. Okay. Like, I would I would buy you 25,000 beers if you wanted them. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'll tell you what we could do. I mean, I don't have my own rig, but I'll definitely take you on. I'll the, go up there and I'll, I'll steal a wagon yeah and i'll go are we to, red dead are we red dead in a game we're red actually i will steal a train <laughs> no and i will i will steal i will not steal i will purchase from a supplier twenty five thousand beers 
and buy enough fridges for you to house them in in your bunker yeah if you get me on f1 game because that would literally be mental i'd love it i'll take that uh John Newman, formerly given away one pint for protection, now given away 25,000 25, just to be on F1. Perfect. Just to be on F1. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> sorry, you mentioned it earlier on. I actually <laughs> feel like the creators of the game might be like, I'm actually really interested in that offer yeah. as well. Yeah. Codemasters. <laughs> I'm up for the 25, <laughs> right, so 25,000 times five. Yeah. I'll just say the quids if that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> but that would be awesome. Yeah. Um, uh, listen, because you, you mentioned it earlier on, you described... Pe- thousands people used to come and see you in some weird way that you're you're being humble and being very polite because you're you're touring again uh, to kind of in smaller venues. What's the sort of thinking behind that? Is that just get that connection back with people again? Yeah, one hundred percent. I think, like, to uh, touch upon it for a minute, I think that just basically in music there is a thing that is there is really large ups and downs, and and it's. It's really hard, like to be honest, I've faced a lot of a lot of situations in my life that have challenged me, like with health and and friendships and losing friends and things like that. But the other thing was that my career was always going like this. And I think when when you plateau out a little bit and you start feeling uh vulnerable and you start feeling a little bit weakened around the hatches of the protection of the strength of your career almost it affects you so so drastically and you're so you're so open to negative things almost Mm. and you start taking them in and and you go to posh parties and where uh this week's number one's walking around and everyone wants a picture and then people just nod at you and Mm. you know people that maybe would have spoke to you before it affects you so much in so many ways and to be honest, it led to me being in a really depressed day and the most I've ever been. And because like I said, before I always had music pushing me forward, but this was this was the kind of the core of the nerve that was damaged almost. So I was like I went to speak to somebody for the first time in my life and I, I realized that I realized that where the depression was coming from was to not being present and not respecting everything and taking things for granted and going oh why am i why why am i doing this like i should be doing big bigger stuff than that i should be doing bigger stuff like this and and to be honest i have days now where it it, it gets to me again and stuff but I, I try and stay positive and and respect now and, and every opportunity i get and i think when i went out <laughs> it's really stupid but i decided that instead of going and getting in posh cars and hotels which really it didn't. It wasn't a sign of success. It was just a sign of me spending money, yeah, yeah. which wasn't anything. Good. That's not going to pay for my kids' education when the time comes, you know. So I think it was like I decided to go get in a camper van and and travel the country and connect with people in a mm. real format and to play them new music and and to appreciate that instead and and to see as that as that as a thing that I can do it in any capacity and love it and enjoy it and and to show people I'm willing and more open than I've ever been and that I don't want to be considered to be one of these people that thinks they're better than anyone else and and it was it was a massive an achievement and it was incredible and it was a huge challenge but I feel like we really did achieve something for both for me positively mentally uh and physically but also for everyone that came I I really hope I mean touch wood that the people saw the songs that I played to him there and one day they can stand there at Wembley and and pat me on the back and say well done you know I'm yeah. glad I got to see the full journey so I mean, it was I, an amazing thing I, I applaud where you're at then and it just seems because like, when you walked into the bunker I was like oh John's in a real kind of like it just seems the word I was going to use which sounds odd was smooth you just said <laughs> a, kind of like, a smooth place to be yeah. in. and I think a lot of people can relate to that regardless of whatever job uh, you're in is you have those moments where they're reflecting or, or comparing yourself to other people and yeah. and i guess that tour is a, kind of a form of therapy oh, I for mean, you. in the in the world we live in now it's it's in the age of technology it affects everybody in so many ways i've had um people very close to me talking to me about how they feel like they're being judged all the time and everything like that and i feel like you know you wake up in the morning the first thing you do is open yourself up to judgment you know, like that's the first thing you do. You check how many people have liked your image or you check how many people have commented or said mm-hmm. what they said or whatever. You are literally screaming, judge me. And I think that when it 
when it becomes out of your control, it, it starts becoming mm -hmm. such a huge, drastic thing that can really affect people. And I think people have to be really wary of that now. Mm -hmm. You know? Do you think that's why so many people game? Because it's their world. They get to just be. I, I completely understand why people do that. Yeah. yeah, I I enjoy it for that reason as well. Like it does feel like escapism, doesn't it? It doesn't yeah. feel like you're being judged. That's why I I don't personally play online games where people are saying things and stuff like that. But I get it, man, and, and I get why the future could behold people sitting in cabins and living in a VR world because mm -hmm. it's an opportunity to escape from the real life that is very judgmental and very shallow, you know. Mm. So you've been so mainly at the moment you're just playing uh you're driving games. Yeah. <laughs> so you're playing the very much the the yeah. insular just for uh, one. Yeah, that's like it's John Newman for one. Yeah. And I can shout whatever I want and nobody <laughs> will reply. <laughs> uh, uh, you mentioned it earlier on you uh started playing Red Dead Redemption. Is, is that what you're into at the moment? Mm, well it, it was my first first time the other night, but it was it was so good. It wasn't so good. I couldn't even look in the horse's eyes knowing I had a gun in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Throughout the game, by the end, I re do you know what it was? I felt like the Grinch. I kept going into the town, and every time I went into the town, they tried shooting me. Oh, come on. I was this like, is guys. John Newman. He's not killed any rabbits. Yeah, and I was like, guys, I haven't done all wrong. Why are you being so horrible? And then the yeah. police guy was like giving me shit, like, oh, you, I know you get out, get out of the town. And I was like, no, what have I done? Yeah. What was this bounty? All right, I don't somebody even know what else bounty might have, is. Somebody else might have played the game previously, but I didn't. And then I felt very upset by the whole situation. All right. So um, uh, we, we touched on it earlier. You've got the, the building things. Uh, there's because oh, I mentioned it earlier, you talked about rally driving. Did you mm. ever play Colin McRae, which is oh, my yeah. favorite game? Mind yeah. the tires, hairpin turn, oh, do you know what? My car driver now does it all the time. He goes, You're going the wrong way. <laughs> 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 it's so good. And every time he does it, I'm like, uh, It catches me off guard because I think of Colin McRae and think I am. You're going the wrong way. <laughs> um, yeah, I love Colin McRae so much. And then and, and that became dirt, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, so would you say, uh, John, uh, that your favourite, because because I'm going to get to it, if we are in an apocalypse yeah. and there's one game you could play yeah. and do for the rest of your days. By myself. By yourself, yeah. yeah. What game would that be? Definitely not Red Dead. <laughs> Definitely not Red Dead, no. <laughs> <laughs> get get too, too a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it'd be... Uh, Probably dirt. Do you know what? If Formula One make it VR, yeah, I think I'd go for that. Okay, but I love dirt, but I just like that there's other going ons around you in F1. It feels a bit mad. If I had a proper F1 simulator, yeah, I I wouldn't even care if there'd been an apocalypse. I'd cause an apocalypse. If I to that, I'd cause an apocalypse just so I could have an excuse. Yeah just to sit inside by myself and play F1 simulator all day. Okay. So if anyone's out there that's got an F1 simulator that like, oh, I like that John Newman, you know, he's got some banging tunes and like, he's all right and stuff. And they'd feel like they want, you know, they want to get on my Instagram or something. I'd be, yeah, I'd be up for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if those people are also like, oh, John Newman, banging tunes, love those. Uh, personally, I want to thank you for my workout uh, as well. Oh. Like, when I'm at the gym. John Newman's in here. So it feels like you know that I didn't do as many uh, kettlebell swings as I planned to today. But anyway, that's not important. <laughs> no, um, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Listen, mate, it was at night time. I'll blame it on the night. The thing is, <laughs> the thing is John, uh, they'll also want to know where, where, where you're at and what's coming up. So they want to know about are you, you've had some challenging times, but where are you at now? And they also probably want to know when's the next music coming up. I know that sounds stupid, but in terms of the whole kind of outlook of life thing that we said about the challenging times, I think I'm very much living in the now. And I think that's the only way you can live. I think if you worry about the future, it's a very scary thing in the times we're in. Like, apocalypse thing aside, but like... Physical health? Yeah, physical health's all right. It's all right. It's good. And I feel great every day. So that's the most important thing. Again, don't know what the future brings, but that's, you know... Let's enjoy now. And I think that's where I'm at right now. So I'm just enjoying making music, putting music out, seeing what happens. 
and and hopefully keeping on climbing the ladder and pushing on to mm. get towards Wembley. But um, in terms of new music, I've got an EP coming out very shortly, obviously on tour in October. And uh, yeah, just keep on pushing on. Yeah. Um, oh, there's a track I was listening to today, actually, which really just like spoke to me. Uh, your track, Easy, uh, which is talking about well, no relationship. A classic, it's yeah. a classic. It's a classic. It's a classic, but it's so good. No relationship, it's easy. And honestly, no. mate, I was at Ikea on Sunday with my girlfriend. And I tell you what, that really stuck with me. That is not easy. We've got a situation at the moment. Yeah. I want a black kitchen. I want it. It's fine. And when, it, when I want some of it, that's it. That's, yeah. I don't need to go and think, oh, maybe I'll try. No. I know which one I want. Yeah, yeah. It's just taking a long time to persuade her. It's hard, isn't it? Yeah. No, it the relation. The better it is, the more deep you go. Yeah. And then the harder it gets. But I've, I'm very fortunate. I'm in an amazing relationship. But yeah, I mean, I I love that tune. I haven't heard that song. I might even randomly play that on my tour or something. Just <laughs> like please. I'll come along just for that and I'll be like, Ikea. It's Ikea, hey, mate. It's me, <laughs> Ikea. <laughs> uh, well, listen, best of luck getting that uh, black kitchen. Uh, this is John. Uh, it ain't going to happen. Uh, John, uh, now I know that F1 doesn't have the VR yet, mm. so I'm going to I'm gonna put upon you that Dirt is the, tra is the game that you <coughs> would play for the rest of your days. Yeah, uh, currently today, uh, if we're living in the present, yes. Well, the thing is, Lynx, keeps you cool, calm and collected yeah. under pressure. And I'm about to put you under pressure right. by asking you as many questions as I possibly can in 60 seconds. You're going to try and answer as many in 60 seconds. Okay, and nervous. then you'll get on this leaderboard. This is the Lynx most chill oh, leaderboard. this is really hard. Michael right. Dapper's on eight and a half. Blake Harrison's on Does three. Does it relate to rallying at all? Because I'd be... Well, it's because it is. It's a rally game. All right, here we go then. Five, four, <laughs> three, two, one. Okay, who is the game's publisher? Publisher? Yeah, we have Masters. Oh, hello. Yes. Uh, which famous rally driver is the Dirt Series linked to? What do you mean? Uh, oh, Colin McRae, sorry. Smashed it. Uh, which country has Colin, is Colin McRae from? Scotland. Okay. Which energy drink brand is showcased on the car? Monster the Dirt... Energy. Uh, that's incorrect. Uh, what Red Bull. Ma uh, no, you have one. Uh, what make is the car? What car? On the... Thing, yeah, a Ford Fiesta. Okay, and it was the Dirt Rally 2016 cover. So just to make sure, yeah, whatever I just said's right. Okay, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Name one of the real world locations the game featured on release. Real world game featured on release. Yeah. Um, Sweet real world Lamb. location. What do you mean? Uh, Name Wales one of the real world Rally GV. Like I don't know. Powers, yep, perfect, got it. Yeah, uh, Powers, which, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> which yeah that's sweet love. <laughs> which English Four race correct circuit in one is featured on the game? Which English race circuit is featured on the game? Brand Touch. No, um, perfect. Uh, absolutely smashed it. What is the answer to that one? Um, it's Lydon Hill. Oh, that's next to my house as well. Is it? Yeah. Huh. They'll be livid. Um, one, <laughs> two, <laughs> three. <laughs> 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 Don't lidden. miss out on the offers. You'll be absolutely I'm lidden. Lidden. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, five. That's not bad. John Newman, I can that's say That's actually pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I'm, pr I'm proud of that. That was the Lynx most chill leaderboard. Uh, and that's what Lynx does. It keeps you cool, calm and collected, under pressure. You've absolutely nailed it. Uh, John Newman, there you go. Five. In there, perfect second. Um, John, it's been an absolute pleasure uh, being in the bunker. Uh, have you enjoyed it? It's been absolute. I've really, really enjoyed it. To be honest, <laughs> good. I just enjoy having a chat with anyone. Really, it's been good. That makes me feel better. No, uh, no, but I mean, <laughs> it's like anyone, and then you, and then yeah, my missus. So perfect. you're like halfway to being my missus. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Uh, listen, uh, Games for the End of the World, uh, together with Lynx, it's done. Uh, another episode of the wonderful Mr. John Newman. We'll catch you next time. But basically, make sure you subscribe, like, uh, listen, just get on board and love this show as much as John Newman and I uh, enjoy each other's company. You have been watching Games for the End of the World on Joe, together with Lynx.